Okay, for this video, I'll be working through question one of the level three 2016 mechanics exam. Question one. Alice is in a car ride on a theme park. The car travels around a circular track that is banked as shown in the diagram below. On the diagram above, draw the labelled vectors showing the two forces acting on the car. Assume friction is negligible. Right, so we're going to need a ruler for this. Um, I'll put a wee dot just to mark the centre of mass, remembering that all vectors come out from the centre of mass when we're drawing a free body diagram. If you haven't seen one of these before, this is a free body diagram, so if you don't know what it is, look it up. So first and foremost, we are going to have gravity pointing straight down, F, G. And my key over here, F, G equals force of gravity, just in case the markers don't know what F, G is. They should. Um, and then we have the normal force, which is perpendicular or right angles or tangent whatever you want to call it to the surface and if I draw a line right between the heads there we go that should be perpendicular to the surface so that's the normal force and of course Fn this is Fn equals normal force normal force so they are the two obvious ones it says there's no friction um, so that means if the cart's not moving, it's just going to fall down, fall down the track. Right, so you may assume friction is cool. Um, the mass of the car and its passengers are 960 kgs, and the track's bent at an angle of 20 degrees. Use a vector diagram to calculate the, sort of the size of the centripetal force on the car. So first and foremost we shall draw in our gravitational force. So oh, should we start some well, I'll start with the normal force. So the normal force I'm gonna exaggerate it just a little bit. Um, so as the as you can see above it's not as pronounced but I'll exaggerate a little bit just to make my triangle a little easier to understand. Here we go, that's my normal force F N off to the side. Gravitational force straight down. Oh, there we go. And we'll notice if you when you do level two, a lot of the time the frictional force is parallel to the surface. If it's a centre pointing force, it points towards the centre of the circle. So it means I'm not going to draw it because I'll ruin my answer. Um, but it needs to be exactly out to what would just be west. So it needs to be exactly at 270 degrees. Um, so this means this here needs to be parallel to gravity. So this is my this is my centre pointing force, otherwise my centripetal force. And if this is it goes there, that means this needs to point towards the centre, like so. And I'm going to call this, and this is F G. This is just the F net. That's the net force. Um, and F net is equal to uh, F C. Um, as you can see, it's a right angle here. A um, little bit of guesswork, they've given us an angle of 20 degrees, which means either that or that is 20 degrees. Common sense tells us this is going to be 20 degrees. If you want to prove it geometrically, feel free, um, but it's way faster just to you know, use common sense. This is theta equals to 20 degrees. There we go. Right, so we're we actually trying to find the centripetal force. So we have the gravitational force if g is equal just to m times g um, and I'm trying to find out this fc so using we have the fc is the opposite and we've got the adjacent so we got O and A we're going to use tan so tan tan Theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. We have the adjacent, so I'll move the adjacent over the other side. So adjacent actually happens to be Fg. So Fg times tan theta is equal to Fc. 
Look at that now. All we need to do is substitute in the numbers. So because we're trying to work out the centripetal force to begin with, so we have mass is 9.6. I'm just to keep that in standard form. Times 10 to the 2 uh, times gravity 9.81. You're level 3 now, so it should be 3SF um, times 10. 20 degrees. Make sure your calculator is in degrees, not radians, otherwise you'll spit out an ugly number. And that won't be the answer. Equals 3427.7 newtons. But 3SF, ooh, 2SF. Uh, and also, here we go, 3SF, 2SF. Really, we should, ooh, the answer schedule is a bit funny there. It's alright. If C is equal to 3, 4, 3, 0. So normally you meant to round to 3SF for all your answers. It seems in say level 3 is 3SF for everything. But I've just noticed a wee mistake. They've given 2SF. So you should really only be able to round up to 2SF. But just whatever. That seems to be a mistake in the marking schedule. Oh, I don't know what they're doing then. Um, right. The following diagram shows... Part of a roller coaster with the car with the track at two positions. Um, move this up a little bit so you can see it. Um, position A, position B. Right, let's just go find a question. Compare the force that the track exerts on the car. The car is at the top of the hill um, with the force that the car exerts. Uh, oh no, the track exerts on the car when the car is at the bottom of the hill entering the loop. Position B. So basically, it's asking us to compare the force. Um, of the track on the cart at A and the force of the track on the cart at B. So I'll just quickly go over. So at, at A, there's gravity obviously pulling it down and then there's going to be the normal force because it's not falling through the track. So the normal force has to equal the gravitational force. Otherwise, it would imply it's accelerating. That would imply it's going to fall through the track. Done. At position B, you've still got gravity, it still exists, and you still have that normal force because it's still getting held up by the track, but as you can see, it's entering a loop, and that means it's changing direction, that means it's accelerating, and it's obvious it's accelerating towards the center of the circle, so that means there's going to be some sort of upwards acceleration, so the track exerts not only the support force, but it also exert and exerts um, an acceleration force in order to turn the cart into a loop. Um, so, back to the question um, the force of the track exerts on the car at the bottom of the loop, um, explain your answer. It's going to be more at B, but I'll just quickly whip through, I'll just write it out um, just sort of nice and neat so you know how to actually sort of answer it literally. Uh, literally. Yeah, position A. Is equal to the normal force. So I've said the at position A, the um, the gravitational force is equal to the normal force, um, or the resultant force, or the support force, whatever you want to call it. At position B. B, the car is accelerating upwards. Uh, how do I spell that? Accelerating upwards to complete the loop. It's doing a loop de loop. Complete the loop. So the track not only has to equal gravity it's probably poorly worded but it sort of makes sense but also provide an upwards force to accelerate ACC rate the car so, uh, so at point B, the track 
exert more force on the car than at point a. and that makes sense I, at point B as we can see over here um, it's doing the loop-de-loop -loop, so the track not only needs to provide the support force it needs to provide the acceleration force so the centripetal force the center pointing force um, to make it do the loop-de-loop -to, -loop, to make it accelerate towards the center to make it go done now this is a bit of a doozy at the top of the circular loop the force of the track exerts on the car is zero so that basically means if g is equal to f c using energy considerations calculate the height h of the hill if the radius of the loop is five meters per second you may assume friction is negligible, uh, negligible otherwise it would be impossible to actually answer well it wouldn't be it'd be very very difficult okay so let's draw on what we know so we've got the radius yep that's five let's double check five meters per second yep no, 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 not five minutes, just five meters. Plain old five minutes is a distance. Is there a meters? Five meters. So now let's just walk through what actually happens. Here, the car only has potential energy. It's only got gravitational potential. So here it's got EP is equal to mg times big H, because I've given us the big H, mgh right here. So it's got only potential. Here, it's got kinetic, because it's moving, it's going up the track. If it if like this is a sort of common problem. Here it has to have a velocity. Otherwise, if it, if it gets to here with zero velocity, it just falls down. So it has to have velocity. So it's kinetic energy, and it's still got potential because it's still, you know, above the ground. Um, so here we've got EK plus EP, which is equal to half MV squared um, plus... MG, what's the height? So the height is just two times the radius because that's one radius to radius gives us the diameter. So I'm going to put um, uh, two, eight, uh, two R. Big R is going to be the radius. You could use small R, big R, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, so how do we link this and this together? So these, these are sort of, we need to link them together. Um, we need to know that here, this is the total energy of the system. So it starts off with the gravitational potential it can't get any more than this like it, it, unless it's getting propelled unless it's got a motor this is the total energy of the system so that means that this is still equal to this because here it can't lose any energy it's got frictions negligible um, so this is equal to this because the energy is not going anywhere it's still got the same amount of energy here as it still does here so over the page I'm going to equate the two together. So I will first and foremost, I'm going to say EP is equal to EP plus EK. It's pretty poor, but you'll get the gist soon. EMG big H is equal to, I'll swap the kinetic around. I'm going to do the kinetic force first. Half MV squared plus MG times 2R. So that is just a reinstatement of what we sort of puzzled out here. So the fact that the original energy the car gets, you know, it's just still equal to this. So here we go. So we do have the radius. Um, as you'll see, we can cancel. We divide everything by m. So we divide the whole thing by m. So we get g h equals half m v squared plus. Oh, cancel that out. Only that plus g. 2R um, and I divide both sides by G as well so I get H is equal to half um, V squared over G plus 2R done so I could almost solve this but I have a little bit of a problem I don't know what the velocity is so I'm trying to find out velocity velocity equals question mark what the heck is the velocity at the top of the loop um, so you may remember that FC equals MV squared over R. Yeah, if we substitute in F equals MA, so we, or A is equal to F over M, we substitute that into here, so we get 
AC equals V squared over R. Um, so this is sort of, we've muddled around with some numbers, and this is where the, so the big connection comes in. The thing that's providing the centripetal force at the top of the loop is gravity. Gravity is what provides the centripetal force, because you'll notice at the top of the track, um, you know, the, the cart feels weightless or what have you, um, because it's accelerating only due to gravity and is in, I wouldn't say free fall, um, but oh, I suppose it is. Um, so gravity is providing the acceleration, not the normal force of the track, just gravity. So that means that my AC is just the acceleration due to gravity. So I have V um, squared equals AC times R. I'm going to take the square root of both sides, cross that out. AC is just gravity, it's 9.81. So I have V equals square root 9.81 times the radius of the circle, 5. The velocity gives me equals 7.00 meters per second negative one so that is the velocity well that's the minimum velocity it has to go in order to not fall off the loop any faster and it's going to have more kinetic energy than it really needs um but it says so the, the trick is it says um the force the track exerts on a car at the top of the loop um is zero so that's that's how you know that it's just the acceleration um, now that we've got the velocity, we've got everything we need to know, so all we do is just substitute in half 7.00 squared over 9.81, remembering to use 3SF, plus 2 times 5.00, that equals 12.5 metres. Making sure to have it in 3SF, I just rounded up straight away, um, but everything's given to you in 3SF, so your answer has to be in 3SF. And that is the answer.